My name is Felix Okeke. Welcome to Married with Atias channel. This is another awesome time and I believe that if you pay attention, you will be blessed and you will gain a whole lot. Because the topic I have today simply says, the seven secrets that will preserve your marriage. The seven secrets that will preserve your marriage. Uh, if you are a married person, maybe you are just sitting down there reminiscing over that great wedding anniversary or that great wedding day that happened a couple of years ago and you were beginning to feel what happened i mean after one or ten or twenty good years of marriage or even a few months you discover that a lot of water has passed under the bridge you discover that somehow uh, the marriage joy the expectations are no longer met you discover that somehow the marriage has turned from excitement to humdrum and somehow you are now beginning to endure your marriage instead of enjoying join it. It is because some of the things I'm going to mention here, we are just swept under the carpet. But after this day, as you begin to walk at your marriage, on the basis of the points I'm going to raise here, suddenly you will discover that the fire and the glow of the marriage will be rekindled and you begin to enjoy that marriage once again. What is the topic once again? Simply says the seven secrets that will preserve your marriage. If you have not uh, been part of this wonderful channel, I, I want you to just look at the red button by my side, subscribe immediately, and get involved as we take on point number one. The very first point I want to raise is a strong prayer life. A strong prayer life. Every wonderful marriage must be anchored on a very strong prayer life. Because when you pray as a couple before God, you draw the mighty hand and presence of God into your relationship. And then you begin to understand the mind of God, the vision of God concerning your life as individuals and as a married couple. Because surely you didn't come together of your own accord. Someone there. The Spirit of God, walking in tandem with the Father, brought you together for an assignment upon the face of the earth. And only by linking in prayers unto that divinity can you actually know what you have crafted and what He brought you together to do. So, and when you understand the reason for your coming together as a couple, the journey becomes easier. The journey becomes more productive. So, the first thing you must do as a couple is to make sure that your prayer altar before God is never quenched. Your life before God keeps shining all the time on a daily basis on a moment by moment basis and that is why they say hey, the couple that prays together they stay together I have never seen a praying couple that parts ways so if you desire your marriage to actually be blissful and be preserved onto I mean onto the long run if you desire a marriage that is built on a solid rock certainly you must have a strong prayer life as a couple the second thing you must also have is a tolerant and forgiving spirit. I have discovered over a period of time, even as a married person, because I've been married for more than two decades, you, I have discovered that without tolerance and forgiveness, no marriage can stand. No man or woman that doesn't have a tolerating spirit, that doesn't have a forgiving spirit can last in marriage. The reason is because as individuals you were raised under different principles and values, under different family foundations, under different family beliefs. Somehow, over a period of time you came together. Certainly there will be weaknesses and strength. Certainly there will be differences, there will be disagreements, there will be areas of conflict. The capacity to know that you are, you are, you are two individuals with diverse set of opinions and values that have come together to live a common life and to find a common ground is very important. It's very important. That is why on, on a daily basis you must have a tolerating heart to be able to tolerate the weaknesses of your spouse, to be able to tolerate some of the things he or she might say that may, you may feel angry about. But check down, sit back and tell God to give you a tolerating heart, a tolerating spirit, and a forgiving spirit. The kind of spirit that forgives even before the offense, I mean, takes it longer. Just, you, just have it in your heart that I must forgive. It does not matter how it may sound. It does not matter how big the, 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 the sin might be. But I am called unto a ministry of forgiveness. For as long as I remain in partnership with my maid as married couples, I must forgive. So forgiveness is very central. Tolerance is very, very central to any marriage that we make the distance. Very, very important indeed. Once again, if you have not uh, subscribed to this channel, look at that red button by my side. Click on that red button and get subscribed. Of course, the third point I want to raise 
is that as a man in marriage, if you desire your marriage to last a lifetime and to be fully preserved, one of the things you must do is that you must have a productive and sensible work ethic. Productive and sensible. I, I, I want to explain that. Many times people are busy without being productive. And once you are busy without being productive, what we set in at the end is frustration. And frustration gives rise to worry. And worry gives rise to a lot of sicknesses of the body. Once you don't have a sensible work ethic, there's a tendency for you to plow all your time in your work to the detriment of your family, to the detriment of your marriage. So a productive and sensible work ethic is the kind of work that is not only productive, but gives you enough time to invest in your marriage and in your family and watch it grow. I have seen men who give a whole lot of time, bringing in a lot of money, but over time, they ended up with wives who don't treasure them. They end up with wives who no longer love them. I have seen women who were married and they took money from their husbands and they went and gave it to a boyfriend outside. Somebody who, can pro who could provide them the, the, the love and attention which they needed from the husband, but he was never there. So when I said a productive and a sensible work ethic, I, I mean the kind of work ethic that allows you not only to be productive but to have time for your marriage and for your family. I have seen women who get so engaged in their work, some of them who are fashion designers, some of them who are, are hairdressers, they are in their hairdressing salon, they are in their fashion house throughout the whole day, even to the darkest of the and somehow the man is feeling challenged. He does no longer have his wife before him. So a productive and sensible work ethic is very, very important if you must have a glorious marriage. Very, very important. And then I go to number four. The number four which you must have is good communication skills. Good communication skills. Very, very, very important. The tendency for you to speak with joy, with respect, with reverence, with one another is very, very important. When you see a man or a woman talking down on his wife or speaking to her in derogatory terms or using caustic remarks upon a spouse, it means that something wrong is definitely wrong. Something wrong is, is, is seriously wrong with the marriage. And I, I, I want to let you know, let me listen to me. If you are a man out there, there is nothing that heals a wound like good words. If you are a woman out there, no matter how much your husband has done, or I mean to, to undermine you or to bring you down, if you can only have a good word in due season, that marriage will always last the distance. But what we have are, are, are wives and husbands who nag and nag to the detriment of their marriage. If you want your marriage to last a lifetime, if you, marry, you want your marriage to be preserved and, and to see the joy of God come into that relationship, certainly I, I ask of you, please learn how to communicate effectively with a, hum, with a humble heart, with a pure heart, with a joyful spirit. It's very, very important. Even as we go to the fifth one, are you there and you are not yet part of what you are doing? I encourage us once again, Please click on that red button and get subscribed. Number five, most men, especially those who do manual labor, something like mechanics or carpentry or some kind of maybe mercenary and all of that, some of them, they dress like escaped lunatics. It's as if they don't have any time for their bodies. They are smelling, and some of them, I, I used to have an uncle in those days, he comes back from work smelling, and he says he's so tired, he goes to bed like that, and he wakes up with so much nutritious odor. And the reality is that no woman wants that. No woman wants that. Pay attention to, their, to your physical body, to the attraction to your physical body. Be attractive. The reason why you were together from the beginning, where you met and you admired one another, it, it started from the physical realm before you even started talking about what was on the inside. I know of so many women who don't pay attention to their bodies. Their armpits are full of haze. Even they are under every, they are, I mean, they don't pay attention. They are smelling. They go to the market, they buy all manner of, they come to the kitchen, they do all manner of things with that sweat and everything. They go to bed, they don't take their bath in the night. I know of so many women who don't even take care of their bodies. The reality is that physical attraction is very, very important. And watch what you eat. You are nutri the nutritional value of what you eat. 
So many women make themselves unattractive. Just about one or two years after marriage, you see a woman and you can hardly believe that it's the same woman. She has bloated, she has doubled, she's now three times her size because she does not watch what she eats. Somewhere along the line, the man may encounter a woman that is ravishing, that is full of attraction, who looked that, like the wife those earlier years. And you can somehow the man falls in love because the reality is that men love, the, for men, men love what they see. So please make yourself attractive for your spouse. As a woman, as a man, when you come back from work, take a good bath, clean up, put on deodorant, look good, look good. It's good for you to look good. In the evening, at night, look good. Be attractive to your spouse. Very, very important. If that marriage must last a lifetime. You want your marriage to be preserved. You want your marriage to meet the vision which you had in mind on the, in, on the day of inception. You want your marriage to actually fulfill God's purpose upon the face of the earth. One of the things you must do is that you must run away from substance abuse. You must run away from unhealthy habits. You must run away from all manner of unholy addictions. You must run away from them. And what am I talking about? Alcoholism. I have seen alcohol, the penchant for alcohol, the penchant, I mean, for, for alcoholic substances. I have seen it destroy homes. I have seen it turn one's peaceful homes into very terrible terrain. I have seen alcohol damage homes. If you have ever seen a home damaged by alcohol, you will be in tears continually. If you must fulfill God's purpose upon the earth with your marriage, then you must walk away from alcohol. And of course, other substances like drug addiction, like, I mean, heroin, I mean, cocaine, I mean, smoking, all manner of substances that abuse and abase the body. These are things you must walk away from. Because if you continue doing that, smoking marijuana, taking all manner of heroin, all manner of cocaine, at the end of the day, your psyche will be impaired. At the end of the day, your thought process will be impaired. At the end of the day, you will become an opposite of what you used to be. And it will destroy your marriage. And of course, in still, in terms of habits, things like gambling. I have seen people who gambled away their fortune, gambled away their homes, gambled away the best treasures they had, simply because they are addicted to gambling. Please, if your husband or wife is a bet Niger candidate, if your husband or wife is so gifted in pools betting, if your husband or wife cannot do without it, he is headed for disaster. Because the day will come. I have seen a man bet his household. <laughs> you, you may not believe it. I have seen a man actually bet the house where, I mean his main house, his family house, where he was living. He put that on the line and he lost it. So, Betting, gambling is very, very terrible. Don't get engaged in it if you actually want to preserve your marriage. There are so many other kinds of addictions like sexual lust. When a man or a woman is involved in sexual lust and he does not want to give up, that marriage will go down whether you like it or not. These are dangerous addictions that ruin the home, dangerous addictions that ruin marriage. The moment you are involved in a dangerous addiction, please, I beg of you, begin to walk away, prayerfully walk away. Go before God. Ask God to give you a new spirit and a new heart so that you'll be able to overcome these addictions. They are terrible. And I must warn you, they are very terrible. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, once again, click on this red button and get subscribed even as we go to the very last one. What is the last point I want to make here? The last point I want to make is that you must commit yourself to a daily routine of improvement. Commit yourself to that. Tell yourself on a daily basis, what can I do to make my marriage better? What can I do to make my partner better? In what way can I improve on my partner? In what way can I improve even on myself that I become a better husband, a better father, a better mother, a better wife? How can I improve? from what I am now to what I want to be. You must go through a process of daily improvement. Make it, a, make it something that you must, you must visit and revisit on a daily basis. 
the, the reality is that once you begin to commit yourself to this routine, you will see things begin to turn gradually and positively and proactively in your marriage. The reality is that good marriages don't fall from the sky. It is just made up of a man and a woman who come together and decided internally, an internal decision, that we will be there for one another through hail and high water. We'll be there to, for one another no matter what it takes. We are committed into this thing. We, are, we want to stay together and glue together and see the vision of God realized concerning us. This is what marriage is all about. It involves a lot of sacrifice. It involves a lot of giving. It involves a lot of pains too, sometimes. But if it is done well, the joy cannot be I mean, underestimated. I want you to come together once again. Look at those seven things we just mentioned and begin to do them one after the other. And a new spirit and a new life will come into that union. And you will see things begin to happen by themselves. May the name of the Lord be glorified in your life and in the life of your mate. And I, I pray that by the next time we meet, uh, some of the things we have mentioned here will have become uh, a part of your schedule, a part of your spiritual and physical menu. God bless you and remain blessed. See you next week.